Your Second Amendment right. Proudly celebrated on the Lars Lesson Show. Welcome back to the program. I'm glad to get to your calls in just a moment at 866-439-5277. But give me a moment with Reagan Hines, who is a prison documentarian and the director of the upcoming documentary, Incarcerating Us. Reagan, good to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me back on, Lars. So you want to give us a pitch for why people should go and watch Incarcerating Us? What's the message of the movie? Sure. Well, um, the U.S. prison system is uh, has a lot of problems um, across the board, and I think that we need to really think about who we are locking up and for how long we are locking these people up for. Um, the U.S. has the number one incarceration rate in the entire world, um, and that's a combination of rigid sentencing laws as well as the war on drugs. So with this huge amount of resources going to lock up low-level nonviolent drug offenders, it's created a situation in which there is uh, overcrowding in many prisons throughout the country. And what this film will do is just give people a really good understanding of this issue and allow them to uh, make up their minds on how we can best reform this problem. All right. Now, when you say in the entire world, you're not making any exceptions. We're worse than Asia. We're worse than Russia. We're worse than China. We're worse than, say, parts of Africa as well. That's right. I mean, we're we're the worst documented. I mean, people will say, well, there's other countries where maybe they're just, you know, executing people. Um, yeah, for, like China. For crimes. But we're we're the number one jailer in the world. Um, the, the U.S. has five percent of the world's population and 25 percent of the world's prison population. So we're way over incarcerating compared to any other country in the world um, that is above Russia. Um, Rwanda is number two, I believe. And and Russia, I think, is number three. So we are number one in the incarceration rate. All right. Now, that counts both jail and prison. But but these are decisions made by the people of the United States through their elected representatives to have these tough penalties, aren't they? That's correct. And I think in the 70s and 80s, there was, um, you know, a lot of people were upset about, you know, crime and drugs. There was the drug epidemic and the media was really playing a lot of stories and, and people were afraid. They thought that, you know, crime was going up. There was a lot of changes in society overall. And Politicians responded with a tough on crime message. Um, it sounded good, but in reality, what happened was we passed some laws that were way too broad. They were passed really quickly in the heat of the moment um, in order to capitalize on elections. And it really hasn't had uh, a beneficial outcome for public safety. It's simply been a waste of taxpayer dollars. You know, you you say that you're you're country. you're asserting that Reagan, but. When I've I've been in areas where they've gone from softer sentences to harder sentences on violent crimes and violent crimes go down. You can see the pattern. So if we lighten up at this point, don't we have don't we at that point accept that uh, that we're going to have more crime if we lighten up on the sentences that brought up uh, that brought about lesser crimes? Well, what I'm advocating for and what what this film will show is it's not necessarily about just being soft on crime. Um, It's more about looking at who we're locking up for how long, because there's so many people that are serving decades in prison for not ever hurting anyone. They had no violent history. They never hurt anyone for simply using drugs or selling drugs. Um, There's a story about a guy who's serving a life sentence without parole. He has no chance of getting out outside of clemency, and he sold LSD. Now, he he did got caught two times before that, so he had priors, but he got probation twice, but then he got a mandatory minimum of a life sentence for selling LSD. Now, I don't think that makes sense uh, to anybody morally or for, you know, tax reasons to spend that kind of money to keep this guy locked up who is not a danger to society. So if there are dangerous people, sure, let's lock them up. And we need to make sure that we have the prison space to lock up people that are violent, because what's happening is you were over capacity. And now, like California is under a court order to reduce their prison population. So when you're dealing with these issues on the back end, it becomes a really big problem rather than looking at the laws and looking at who we're putting in prison in the first place and for how long. Because, you know, when you fill them up with, with all these different people, you get you run into all types of different problems. And, and it's definitely not a conducive vi- environment for rehabilitation. So you have recidivism rates that, that go up as well. Okay, so what's, what's the solution? What, what do you do instead to people who've committed these kinds of crimes? And I might, I might disagree with you about the LSD, given, you know, if this guy was out selling this drug, you know, if, you, if I talk to the parents of the kids who were given the drug, and who are affected by the drug, and in some cases might have taken their own lives while on the drug, they might disagree with you about how how long it's appropriate to lock up a guy who, after two trips to the joint, didn't learn his lesson and had to go back for a third and stay for life. Right, and you make a good point. I mean, drugs are dangerous, and and it's definitely a problem, but 
the fact is if you're you know if you're over 18 and he wasn't selling to kids he was actually just selling to other friends that were deadheads as they call them who can also get hurt or killed by, by it right right so i mean these are usually you know consenting adults that are just buying and selling with each other and they you know, should have the right to put what they want in their own bodies. Well, but you do make a good yeah. point. They are dangerous. So that's that's definitely something to, to think about. Am I right in assuming that an awful lot of the people who decide on their own to put drugs in their body are financing that habit through some kind of criminal activity? Well, a lot of them do. And I think that's that's a problem that could be alleviated if um, if drugs were legalized and regulated because they wouldn't be as expensive and you wouldn't have this huge profits that are to be made for uh, with drug dealing, and you wouldn't have to go out and rob and steal and you know even kill people in order to get in order to fund your habit. Um, you know these drugs wouldn't cost the the amount that they Reagan. Do. I'm not sure I'd want to live in a society where methamphetamine, for example, was cheap, easy, and available and legal because it it has trem- and, and I'm not not so much worried about the person who wants to put it in their body, but what they're going to do while they're high. Uh, You know, people who take a lot of methamphetamine are pretty whacked out. Well, do you want to live in a society in which we are trying to rid the entire country of drugs and drug users and we end up locking up so many different people and wasting all these tax resources going after drug offenses? Meanwhile, there's so many murders and robberies that go unsolved. Well, here's the thing, though, Reagan. Reagan, I tie the two of them together. Do you know that an awful lot of people who commit murders and rapes are high when they're doing it? You know, and, 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 I, and an awful lot of people who get robbed uh, are, are getting robbed by somebody who's trying to finance a drug habit. Am I wrong about that? No, I mean, th- certainly that happens. There's a, those are examples of, of that happening. In, in my opinion, there are, there's a lot of people that have not ever committed any crimes of violence. They simply sold or used drugs that are in prison. So it doesn't make sense to have those people, you know, taking up these resources or focusing all this energy on getting those people Meanwhile, when you, I mean, we need to go after these these violent crimes and these property crimes, like you say, that's you know legitimate. That makes sense. Uh, you know, I got I got to tell you, when I've gone on ride-alongs with the cops, and and most of what they do a lot of evenings is just deal with adults, uh, br- boyfriends and girlfriends, husbands and wives who are beating on each other. And one of the common characteristics is they're either high or they're drunk. You find very few, you find a few sober people who are beating on each other. Uh, you know, for, for the most part, men beating on women, unfortunately. But, but beating on each other, an awful lot of them are doing that while they're high, either on alcohol or on drugs. I'm trying to imagine what ride-alongs would be going to domestic uh, violence reports or domestic uh, incident reports if, if cocaine and methamphetamine were legalized uh, available and cheap right well unfortunately you know those types of things happen but there's no way you know through law enforcement there's no way of reducing the amount of uh of drug use and the availability of drugs people are still going to use drugs no matter whether they're legal or illegal i think we just need to look at it from the standpoint of what's the best route to go we have 40 years over 40 years of experience to look at and you know by all accounts it's a failure it hasn't accomplished any of these goals so let's look at a better way to deal with the drug problem. I think law enforcement and uh, incarceration is the is the wrong solution. It's been looked at as, you know, let's just put a mandatory minimum on this drug, and all of a sudden that'll solve the problem. Well, it hasn't worked. We've tried it for a long period of time. So let's just reorient the way that we're doing this, and let's make the justice system more effective and more efficient by going after real crimes and trying to deal with drug use and drug abuse in a different way. Reagan Hines is a prison documentarian, and he is the director of an upcoming documentary called Incarceration, Incarcerating Us, meaning a play on incarcerating U.S. Uh, Reagan, I'll be interested to look at it, and then we'll talk to you after I've seen the film. How's that? That sounds great. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Thank you very much for coming on. I'll get to your phone calls in just a moment. And up next, a fantastic example of where a ban on weapons goes too far on one college campus. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show on Compass Media Networks.